approximately one in five girls will face some kind of sexual abuse uh, before she reaches age of 18, and okay. one in six boys. But unfortunately, we always forget the children because children mm -hmm. don't vote, you know, so nobody yeah. listens to them. So the kids kind of left behind, I think, in societal movement towards the eradication of violence. How would you break that down according to how you see, you know, children in Thailand suffering? I think emotional abuse is number one. Mm -hmm. Number two would be physical abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, how often you yeah. need that. And sexual abuse would be the third one. Okay. which is quite uh, quite high incidence as well. Yeah. Usually if you look at the stats, approximately one in five girls mm -hmm. will face some kind of sexual abuse mm -hmm. uh, before she reaches age of 18, and okay. one in six boys. What kind of emotional abuse are we talking about? And what have you been seeing? I think it's all of that. Mm -hmm. It's all, you know, emotional abuse is not just adults to children. Yeah. There's uh, a lot of children child on yeah. child uh, mm -hmm. emotional abuse, you know, calling names, bullying, you know, yeah. other stuff, you know. Usually it's a learned behavior from adults, you know, you yeah. yourself being subjected to bullying and then you yeah. do it to other children. But yeah, th whenever there is some kind of imbalance of power, mm -hmm. we seem to, as a human being, try to position ourselves against each other. Yeah. And uh, sort of emotional um, manipulation or emotional yeah. abuse is a little bit part of that, mm -hmm. you know. But it's usually not a problem because, yeah. you know, usually children or that particular individual will have the skills to deal with that. Yeah. But sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes. Uh, like a runaway train, you know, mm -hmm. and then you cannot stop the consequences and become yeah. really, really bad. Yeah. Now, um, as for physical abuse, obviously there's the home and then there's the school. What's the balance that you see there? Yeah, again, children? bullying is a lot of physical abuse during mm -hmm. the bullying, especially yeah. among the boys. Yeah. Uh, but the family usually is the number one, you know. Uh, if you look at the, at the trauma statistics yeah. of the children, a lot of it is uh, corporal punishment gone bad. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, parents just wanted to punish the child, but yeah. maybe child was trying to run away or yeah. try to, to, and then you know, suddenly their shoulder is dislocated or yeah. something. You know, yeah. So there's a lot of accidental uh, mm -hmm. physical abuse. You know, maybe the actual trauma was not the intention, yeah. but because parents were trying to harm the child, yep. in the learning purpose. You know, mm -hmm. um, they end up with a uh, with a child in the in the, the hospital. hospital. Yeah, now obviously this is Thailand, so we can't not talk about um, sexual abuse here. Yeah, well, I mean, Thailand has improved a lot, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of the legislation. Legislation yep. is much better, you know, there's a lot of, uh, uh, how to say, laws that are in place, anti-human trafficking yep. law, you know, uh, uh, combat uh, suppression of prostitution yep. acts, you know. Um, even penal code was amended yep. to accommodate for some offenses against children. Yeah. So in that sense, you know, a lot of progress has been yeah. done, but yet there is still a lot of uh, sexual abuse and especially yeah. sexual exploitation going mm -hmm. on. If you look at sexual abuse statistics, you know, most of the time uh, the abuser is somebody within close circle yeah. of the child because um, abuse of a child requires trust. Yeah. So that particular person needs to build trust. Mm -hmm. If you look at the exploitation, you know, it's usually yeah, either tourists or local yeah. uh, people who do that. But um, the difference between the abuse and the exploitation is that there is exchange of uh, something. Yeah. Right. So, a lot of the times now abusers uh, choose to exploit the child rather mm -hmm. than abuse them directly because they feel like okay, there is enough legislation in the place, and if the child talks, you know, they will, won't be able to get away with it. You know, for the viewers that do care for the children, you know, I, I think everyone sees there is a problem. You know, we've seen street kids. Right. You know, forced to sell goods in the, you know, intersections. If you're here, you see the problem. Yeah. What can we do? It's yeah. important for the child to realize sometimes that what is happening to them is not normal. Yeah. So it's, somebody acting, you know, hey, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. Why are you not at home? You know, it actually yeah. triggers something. Hey, maybe I should be at home. You know? Exactly. Because I think if they grew up like that, it's going to be hard for them to, to know yeah. that there was a different life. I've, I've talked to kids 
selling flowers near a restaurant. And I said, and it was night. It was like maybe, um, you know, probably 1 a.m. Yeah. You know, a time when a kid should be asleep at home. Right. And I said, hey, um, why, why are you here? And, you know, she said her dad dropped her off and said, you better make the money. You better sell all of this stuff. That's right. Now, I'm not sure if that's true, but if it is, it in my heart, I'm like, I kind of want to just let you go home and buy all of that. But then how do I do that? Who do I report her father uh, you, you to? Need, you need a professional, yeah. yeah. Uh, you need a social worker to address this. Yeah. You know, um, um, under the Child Protection Act, you mm -hmm. have uh, properly established uh, what they call competent officials okay. that are able to deal with the family matters in okay. this particular situation. You obviously need to have an intervention, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, you are able to do them. You call us or call one three zero zero, which okay. is the ministerial hotline, or okay. my hotline one three eight seven. Okay. Or give that number to the child when they are ready, they will call. So children either call us on our uh, helpline one three eight seven, or okay. digit number, or they walk or they walk in into our center, which okay. is next to Kuala Lumpur, you know, which is mostly geared for street or street connected children. Okay. So you either call and you walk in, and then if you walk in, then there is a certain basic services for you. Like mm -hmm. we have some food, we have some showers, we have washing machines, we have some secondhand mm -hmm. clothing, toothpaste, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then, if you want, you can ask us for help, mm -hmm. and that's how we start working. You know, what's your okay. problem? And if you, if the children call us, yeah, call us and then state your problem, and we'll try to help. Mm -hmm. We always focus on the skill-based approach. Mm -hmm. Skill-based approach requires not just us fixing the problem for yeah. the child, but the child acquiring the skills to fix and avoid the next problem. 